Okay, so Chewy here in the pod for part eight of Rover Build, a Hobby King unboxing, and hopefully programming the radio, but we'll see how that goes. So, ordered this wonderful box of parts from the East Coast Warehouse, and contained inside the box are fun items for the Rover. So, uh, first of note is this fabulous uh, LiPo battery warning. We'll go over this and see if there are any uh, gems in there. Is said LiPo. And it is the uh, Multistar 5.2 amp hour. High capacity. Very nice. Nice and bricky. have the 5 amp BEC have the uh, USB programming cable for the radio have the Hobby King T T6 radio and let's see if they've gotten any better with the packaging of this thing Nope, it's still the same junky box with one layer of insufficient foam padding. But here is the radio in all its brand new glory. Uh, you can see this stick is ratcheted, while all the other sticks are spring-loaded. That's the mode 2. has power switch, bind switch, a couple of switches up top, uh, takes eight AA batteries, and there is the trainer slash programming port. Here is the Six channel version 2 receiver and a bind plug. And then, also in the Hobby King order, I picked up a couple of inexpensive speed controllers just to test out to see if they're actual, actually suitable. So, these are the brushed car controllers. Uh, they rate it at 45 amps. Uh, very small, fairly nice construction. So I got a pair of those. And then also from Amazon, I picked up a pair of the, as linked in the previous uh, YouTube video, the Indoor 320 amp, high volt car and truck ESC. This is what's inside the package here. This is a slightly beefier speed control. It has uh, connections for a pair of motors, which actually makes it quite handy for the Rover, as it has a pair of motors per side. Um, has a fan for cooling. Uh, and fairly nice unit, very compact. Uh, so I peered through the side of this semi-translucent case here, as I have not opened this one up. And inside, that is, at least this is how it's labeled, I don't know if it's a knockoff or a genuine, but it is a uh, National Rectifier IRL 3803. And the nameplate is 140 amps. And inside here there are six MOSFETs. So this is an odd number, even odd number. Um, generally, I'm not positive, but that generally means that this will only give you half the ampacity in reverse. And, uh, well... The numbers are always uh, suspicious. Uh, there's no way this will take 320 amps for anything more than a fraction of a second. But um, 
So uh, we'll see about both of these speed controllers. I've got a pair of both of them, and uh, we'll see what they do. So this Hobby King one has uh, handy screws on the bottom, so let's just take that apart. So it's a uh, double stacked board. There's the uh, controller and logic on this board, and then on this board is the uh, the FET stack, and those are all uh, heat sunk to this uh, aluminum heat plate there. And if you kind of peer in the side, there's four FETs on that side, then another four on this side. So uh, generally, that means that this will give you the uh, same ampacity in forward and reverse. Uh, however, they only rate this at 45 amps, whereas this guy is rated at uh, 320 amps. But nevertheless, it's not really the, uh, the amperes that may make these suitable or not suitable. In my opinion, it is the uh, pause between forward to reverse and um, there's there's some sort of programming feature with this guy there's a little button so we'll see if we can dial these in to get no reverse because that's really the important thing for the robots uh, never discharge batteries at higher amperage never allow the temperature event of a crash always say quickly and safely disconnect and remove batteries from the model Area away from flammable materials in approved lipo bag. Oh yes, that's that's probably a good precaution. Charge in a lipo bag or other fire safe container. Very good that they're including this uh, tip sheet so that you don't uh, burn down your house when you're charging batteries. Figured before uh, trying to program this thing, should probably test it and make sure it works. So to power the radio, I'm going to use this little 12 volt uh, power supply, 12 volt battery instead of the eight AA batteries just because I don't have any of those so plug that right into the uh, charge port and if I turn this on see I'm getting the orange light so I'll be testing with the Hobby King car speed controller and to power that I'm just going to use this little tiny LiPo battery because it's uh, 2S the car controller is rated for 2S it'll probably run just fine on the uh, multi-star battery but just for testing we're going to be uh, cautious with it. Try not to burn it out so quickly. And we'll hook it to this little drill type motor. You can see it has the capacitor on the back just like the drill motors. And this little uh, tape flag so we can hopefully see it spinning around. So now we'll take the receiver and we'll plug the PWM line into channel 1. And the uh, black wire goes to the outside of the case. Of course this has a little key. And so there we go. Nice tight fit. Not gonna come unplugged. Plug the little two cell lipo in to the car controller. So I turn this on. Now I'm going to turn on the switch on the car controller. Play some music, and the light on the receiver turns on. And when I turn off the transmitter, this light should turn off. And it does. That shows us that we are in communication between the transmitter and the receiver. So now let's see if we move the stick, the motor goes. And it does. Forward, reverse, forward, forward, already I can see problem, go from forward to reverse, going full forward to reverse, it does not go, it wants to come to a full stop, and then it will do reverse. So we'll have to read the manual that 
uh, hopefully is on the Hobby King site, to see if we can program that fe feature out of the controller and give it uh, instantaneous forward to reverse. So as we can see, if you're in reverse and go to full forward, it'll do it no problem. But uh, we do have confirmed uh, communication between the transmitter and the receiver. That's all working. This controller is working. It's probably a good uh, good practice to test all this stuff when you get it to to make sure it all works. Okay, actually, while we're here, let's test the fail-safe behavior of uh, this setup. So uh, let's say your robot's going full forward and it drives out of range. Uh, you don't want the thing to keep going, you want the thing to, to come to a safe stop. So we'll simulate that by just switching off the transmitter. And you can see the motor comes to a stop. So that's the behavior you want. That's the uh, uh, fail-safe. Uh, some controllers and some setups won't do that. The robot will just continue right on going uh, off into the distance.